Now, Sri Lanka's uh, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has appointed new foreign and finance ministers after the entire cabinet resigned en masse as the country spirals into a deepening crisis. Now, Mr Rajapaksa has offered to share power with the opposition as protests escalate with calls for his resignation. To discuss the crisis, my colleague Wei Su spoke, uh, speaks to Dr Jehan Pereira. He is the executive director at the National Peace Council of Sri Lanka. Uh, Dr. Pereira, now this uh, invitation to share power by the president, are we finally seeing the kind of political inclusiveness and unity that we have not seen that would finally help the country address a crisis that has become far more than just an economic crisis? I'm afraid it will not address the problem because the opposition has uh, said that they will not join this uh, unity government. And it it makes sense also from their point of view because uh, the president and the prime minister remain in place and the president is enormously powerful. Uh, the parliament has a majority of government members. So even if the opposition does join in, they will not be the decision makers. They may not be able to influence the decisions that the government is making. And instead, they will have to share responsibility for the problems that are caused in the future, even by changes in policy. So uh, I think the, it, what is important is that the government should address the problems that the people are facing. They are facing tremendous economic problems, uh, power cuts that can last up to 13 hours. Now it has been reduced a bit. Uh, there are huge uh, long lines uh, extending for a kilometer or more of, of vehicles waiting to get diesel. Uh, the, the farmers are not able to plow their fields or, or use the uh, mechanized equipment. Uh, the, there is no medicine. Medicine supplies are reduced. Uh, prices have escalated. Government Parra, has to be a plan. If I could cut in. But how can the public be reassured if they see their government as it has done, say this crisis is not of their making, when in part it is? something that has come from, for example, tax cuts, the refusal to address the fact that expenditure far outruns revenue. Yes, the government has to give an answer. That's what the people want. I mean, when the people are protesting, they are saying they are, they are hungry. They don't, they, they, are, they don't have electricity. They don't have jobs. They want the government to give an answer. And the government is still not giving an answer to them. And uh, what many people think now is that the government should go to the IMF lender of last resort, but the government is not very uh, open about it, not very transparent. They, if the protests will continue, regardless of what the government does politically in terms of changing its composition ministers, until it gives answers to the people about what it is going to do and offers them some hope that there will be a, a, a better future for them. Well, it has said it will speak to the IMF. There will be more conditions laid out uh, later this month. But whatever happens, it has to raise taxes. It will have to carry out unpopular measures such as restructuring of state-owned enterprises. Is the public going to be taking well to that when life as it is, as you mentioned, is already very hard? Yes, that, that is true. That, and that is one of the reasons the government is saying it does not want to go to the IMF because the IMF will impose various conditionalities on it, which will be hard for the people to take. Uh, but I guess we, we have to go through that process. And in particular, there is something that, uh, that uh, economists have been advocating. They have been saying restructure the commercial debt. Sri Lanka is saving its dollars to, uh, to pay foreign creditors not to use those and not using those dollars for the needs of the people. That is a great cause of grievance within the country, and it's leading people to believe that the government actually is, is stealing their dollars from them, the dollars that could feed them, and that could get them the petrol and diesel and lead to the power cuts being reduced. And government must, I think, engage in that process of negotiating with our creditors with the help of the IMF. That is absolutely crucial. Oh, thanks so much for all that, Dr. Jehan Pereira from the National Peace Council of Sri Lanka.